day 51 in lockdown. Can you imagine on Monday, which effectively would have been Bank Holiday Monday, seeing this headline from your soar away scum? Your dear old soar away scum, always there, always working hard for the British working man. What would your soar away scum put on its front page? Well, let's start with we're morally bankrupt. Let's start with happy Monday. Over 30,000 people dead. Granny will die soon anyway. Obviously, one of those kind of memes that I just have to collect and often pass on. But the Daily Hail, or the Daily Basket Case, of course, is also celebrating all of that easing of lockdown on Monday. Do you remember, or perhaps you're not, an oldie like me, so perhaps you never heard it in the first place. When I was about 16, 17, Don McLean had released the album American Pie. It's a very long song, American Pie. It's got loads of cultural references at the time in it to things like nuclear war, the Vietnam War the riots at American universities where uh, student protesters were shot on sight. Yep, but there's one line near the end that I absolutely love. The music is very fast and very driving right up to the end. I'm not a musician, I can't even play the guitar. But the lyrics are brilliant. They just flow with this kind of almost stream of consciousness technique. You can imagine them just streaming out of Don McLean's mind and he puts this fast driving guitar music to it. At the end, as everything's kind of going to chaos, yeah, we assume after some kind of nuclear war from the picture in the lyrics, yeah, he sings, and I'm not going to sing it, I met a girl who sang the blues and I asked her for some happy news, but she just smiled and turned away. In the streets, the children screamed, the lovers cried and the poets dreamed, but not a word was spoken. The church bells all were broken. And just before that, he says, I met a girl who sang the blues. This is actually at the beginning of the lyric. I met a girl who sang the blues and I asked her for some happy news. Amazing, isn't it? Happy news! Happy, happy, happy news! What does Boris want? Boris wants happy news! Happy, happy, happy headlines! Happy, happy, happy Brits! People who are cheering, people who are going to be released! Can you imagine something on the scale of the Taglicious Hail, the Daily Mail? It's going to come up with, I'm sure, something like Britain's hostages to lockdown. Boris releases you. Boris turns key to release imprisoned Brexit. Not Brexit. It, Boris turns key to release locked down Britain. Go. Go to work. OK, supposed to be phased, right? Supposed to be phased. But on a day when the death toll, well, in care homes, yeah, they never got included at first, did they? They, they never included them. Still rising. Yeah. In care homes. But hey, as it said on the mock-up of the Soraway scum, as it said on that mock-up of your Soraway Rupert Murdoch scum. But hey, Granny was going to die anyway, wasn't she? As Chucky Mart always puts it, yeah? You'll have Granny sitting there in her own piss, waiting for someone to come and change her. 
Yeah, she probably still has done right throughout COVID, right throughout this pandemic. Even now, Granny is probably still sitting there, sadly, and local authorities very shortly won't have to look after their vulnerable by law. The, the, it's all been changed. They, they don't have a duty to visit Granny anymore. They can actually enact that now under the new law. Granny can just sit there. Local authorities can have no responsibility for her at all. Just enact that under the special regulations and we'll just leave her there to die. Yeah? And we'll be finding bodies of people where they live and have starved to death or have suffocated. Yeah? Another one for you. As we start to, pardon me, undo lockdown, get Britain working again to make your rich controllers even richer. But as we start to do that, yeah, remember another failure of these bastards in government. We send out for all that PPE from Turkey and they interview the twat who is my Tory MP Brandon Lewis for Great Yarmouth and an interviewer says to him you know when it, when you've tried people have offered you the stuff from um, our own manufacturers in Great Britain you know when they've when they've done that you've checked it all out and you've said no no or you've checked some of it out and you said no 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 can't use it not to the right standard don't want it so you know that stuff that we just got from Turkey that we made such a big fuss about yeah the RAF sent the Hercules over or whatever to pick it up or two Hercules is yeah um, so that we can't now use. It's not safe. It's not to our standards. And he makes some burbling excuse or whatever. And she said, well, wouldn't you check it first? And he burbles on and comes up with another bloody excuse, right? So when the um, infection rate goes up again, as obviously it's going to, especially when that second wave comes crashing over, yeah, as that second wave hits, yeah, what's going to happen to our nurses and our doctors um, who are going to be hopefully caring for those patients, yeah, because obviously some of the first wave are probably now dead, so as they're dead, that might have emptied some, might have emptied some beds, who knows, yeah. But are they going to be getting proper PPE? Yeah. Oh, and testing. Another one we must always celebrate. Missing your target again, Mr. One Night in Wankok. Missed it again, didn't we? Can the PM apologise for you missing that target? Can the PM please apologise? Can we say we're really sorry? Yeah. Seems to me... The whole thing has been a total bloody failure. Tories have lied, and yeah, absolutely, Tories have lied, and people have died, and they're still dying. Nurses and doctors as frontline staff in care homes, in hospitals, our ambulance personnel, everybody involved on the front line, Many of them have died because they've not been properly protected. Your friends, your relatives, your elderly and sick in care homes, the people who have to care for them, who want to care for them, they continue to die. And Boris says, well, it's getting better. No, it's not getting better. I think the reason to start easing is Boris is being screamed at absolutely screamed at by every single billionaire corporate controller he's got that in the end run this country they're screaming at him our profits are through the floor. Our companies are going to fold up. We might even have to... Sh 
uh, invest. Uh, we might even have to put in some of our personal billions. Yeah. And we don't want to put in our personal billions. Yeah. We want you bailing us out like the airlines. Yeah. We want you bailing us out. Come on. Branson doesn't want to sell his private island, does he? Yeah. He wants the taxpayer to bail him out. Yeah. Too soon. Too early. The second wave hasn't even hit yet. Believe me, it will. Government still not including the true figure. Again, I repeat, go back to something that you would have read in the Financial Times that has been based on ONS trusted statistics. We must already, well, we're certainly over 50,000. That total of 30,000 is an absolute lie. And it has also been calculated, and again, you're not going to get this in the mainstream media, that per capita, in other words, per head of population, we actually see that we have the greatest death toll per head of population, I believe, in the world. Okay, what can I say? Just listen out on Sunday, folks, and once again after Sunday, and it comes sending your kids back to school, you're going to send yours back first? I really need to know. Bye.